Hello everybody, welcome to the fourth of the Chemical Database Service Summer Webinars. Today's talk will be presented by Andrus Strauss from Chem Axon, who will be discussing Chemicalize. Um, so, over to you, Andras. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Andras Strauss. I'm the Project Manager for Chemicalize.org. I'm working for Chem Axon. Uh, today, in this webinar, I would like to introduce you to Chemicalize.org. So, this is an introductory uh, description of chemicalize.org. I'm going to do some uh, demonstrations and I'm, I think it will be 25 to 30 minutes, so at the end we'll have plenty of time, time for questions. Okay, let's get started. So, what is chemicalize.org? Um, chemicalize.org is a free web application from Chemexon that is built uh, using Chemexon's toolkits and we have started to work on this approximately four or five years ago um, as a proof of concept and over time it grew. Right now we have five major services in the web application. Um, one lets you find and see molecules on web pages while browsing. This is the big one. This is uh, the reason why most of you are here today, I think. Um, basically we are augmenting web pages and highlighting structures in them using a text recognition technology. Um, a second version of this uh, allows you to do very much the same thing in PDF files. Um, and then we have a structure search capability on the databases uh, as well as property calculation and prediction. So right now I think you are asking why is Chemexon doing this? But first of all, we always had the urge to just uh, try the latest stuff and, and innovate with it. So we think that over time we put together a pretty unique application that is actually acting as a chemical guide for researchers. And as a byproduct, it also led to new products. For example, in 2010, um, a tool called Document Structure was uh, released out of the experience that we had with Chemicalized Talk, so this is not stopping. Of course, as a software developer company, uh, we also want to push the limits um, in terms of what's uh, needed for the future. So this was our first full web application, and also it in introduced some pretty new uh, visualization tricks that really set the standards for our future, uh, are right now already available uh, products. And, well, there's that cool factor as well, that it should be useful, uh, not just a few features, and it should be for, uh, it should be usable and, and it should be fun to use. So, we are always experimenting with uh, more ways to really uh, make the application more easy, effortless to use and to take away the complexity. Um, so, now let's start with the database, because this is, this is why you're here. So we have a service called Web Page Viewer, uh, which I will describe in a few minutes, uh, but for now it's enough to know that it has roughly 12,000 users a month uh, growing, and these users contribute, uh, contributed 429,000 web pages to our database, from which we extracted over 600,000 chemical structure names, which converted to almost 400,000 unique structures. So we have a really, really big and powerful crowdsourced database uh, which contains very interesting information. Uh, this uh, database is the basis for many of our services, like for example the ChemSearch database, which we are going to talk about in a few minutes. Uh, some interesting factoids, so you know what the source of these structures are. Uh, this pie chart shows where we first seen A structures and what you can see is that over 60% of the structures came from patent archives like free patents online and PetBase but also we have an abundance of extra uh, data sources like Wikipedia, ChemDrug and Zinc. Um, so now let's see the main services of Chemicalize at work. The first one is called MapPageViewer. This was uh, available when Chemicalize.org launched in 2009. Practically, it, 
chemicalizes a web page. This is a verb we made up. Uh, this describes the process by which we find structures in the text, highlight them, and show you a chemical structure table of contents, if you will, at the top of a web page. Uh, we also made it sure that it's easy to use the web page viewer, so sub sub subsequent pages are also chemicalized as you click through them. Um, I will now try to do a demo. So I'm going to chemicalize the torque. This is the long screen. And if in the web page viewer I type something very, very simple, wikipedia.org slash slash aspirin, just to see what the web page viewer can do. Hopefully the demo will work. Then what you can see at the bottom is that we have the regular Wikipedia web page uh, that describes aspirin. And at the top, what we have is a very interesting ribbon that contains all of the structures that we found inside the web page, including 271 mentions of aspirin. And if we start clicking, then you can see that all of the uh, mentions of the word aspirin are highlighted. And if I click, keep clicking, then we can cycle through the mentions of the structure inside the page, including not just aspirin, but for example, its IUPAC name, which leads us to a second feature. So if you, highlight, if you mouse over any of the highlighted structures, then you can see its 2D structure image, as well as you get access to our other services. Um, I'm sorry, you, you get access to our other services, like calculation and searching, which I will describe in a few minutes. Um, of course, you have access to downloading all of these structures. So if I hit download, then you can uh, get all these structures found on this page, all the 349 of them in, in various chemical structure file formats. So this is the web page viewer. Um, and now let's get back to the presentation. As I earlier mentioned, uh, the second version of this web page viewer is the document viewer, which chemicalizes a PDF file. As in, we can display the PDF file inside the browser without any plugins, and find the chemical information inside that, and highlight it and show the location. Um, I will do a demo of this, this later. Um, a supplementary uh, feature or service of chemicalize.org is the Properties Viewer. Properties Viewer uh, is a way to access calculations and uh, prediction of physical chemical properties for the chemical structure. And actually, we can do this for any structure, not just those found on uh, web pages. So you can actually draw structures or upload them from uh, any structure file format. Uh, we are also uh, showing similar structures on this page, so you can get access to uh, relevant other information. And as I earlier mentioned, we are focusing a lot on user interfaces. So this report, which I will show in a minute, uh, is actually a very customizable uh, report interface, if you will. So I'm going back to my demo. And if I hit calculate for this um, version of aspirin, then we are loading the properties viewer. As you can see, dynamically, calculations are loading. And what you can see is various descriptors of the structure, including log D, polar surface area, topology analysis, some geometry information, so practically everything you need to know about the structure. If I just reset this calculation, then I can even get a customized view of this intended for medicinal chemist, but of course we have access to uh, some other templates and your own customization. Um, at the bottom, as I mentioned, we have the similar structures box, which shows different sorts of aspirin for now, as we have a lot of structures in the database. But of course, we also have access to other web pages. These web pages actually mention aspirin, so this would be a good candidate to find other web pages that actually mention the structure. Uh, this could be uh, information sources like uh, pages describing a disease, or a research area, or even patents. Let's continue with our services. The 
chemical search service, it builds on top of these. So as I mentioned, we have 400,000 unique structures in our database uh, with some related information, uh, like the source of the structure. So you can search this data set. Uh, and as a, uh, as a result, you can get access to reading material on the structure, be that the source patent or an open access uh, article or even relevant Wikipedia pages or blogs. So, if I choose can search and start a very simple search with Purin to find relevant reading material for Purin, in the chemical search service, what we are first getting is that we have 359 structures that are relevant to the Purin uh, search query, and this was a similarity type search, so the results are ordered by similarity. Uh, as you can see, the first one, an exact match to, uh, to Purin, has 1,400 related pages. So what happens if I click on the structure? Uh, what you can see is a very nice list of results uh, that contain structure sources for Purin, as well as related structures on the page. So these are structures that appear next to Purin on this web page. If I keep scrolling down, we can find relevant, uh, related information to Wikipedia, uh, an ACS journal article, or even a patent. So this is a nice way to get back to those uh, web pages where the structure is originated from. So this is a nice source check for our uh, database structures. Of course, this chemical search is not always useful. There are cases where the chemical isotope database doesn't actually include uh, the structure you're looking for. For that, we build map search. Map search is a very clever proof of the concept search engine that uses Google search uh, to look for the structure online um, on pages that are not yet in the chemical isotope database. What we're doing is we're analyzing your search query to identify the chemical structures in them. From that point, we are calling a special Google search API, a programmable interface, through which we can uh, do chemical search of the Google index. Um, this is not uh, an actual chemical search as we're looking for exact mentions of the structure but it's a very, very good starting point to find, chemicals, uh, to find search results in Google using chemical information. I'm going to do a demo of this as well. If I go back to the front page and select web search, then I can start something very, very simple. I'm typing headache and aspirin to see what Google knows about the relevance of headache and aspirin. What you can see at the top is a generated query. This gives us a hint of what's happening in the background. You can see that we kept headache, but we recognized that aspirin has something to do with chemistry, as we generated a bunch of chemical uh, structure representations, human readable structure representations of the structure aspirin, uh, those that might appear in web pages, including various uh, Drug, um, various common names, traditional names, brand names, as well as an inchi key and an IOPEC name. So at the bottom, what you can find is that we are displaying a similar uh, search result display that we've seen earlier that is somewhere in between the Google search results and the CAM search results. And the nice thing is that we already have highlighting this information, so you can see that headache and aspirin actually appear next to each other inside a page, and that is wikipedia.org, but there, are, there is much more. And if I click on it, then of course I'm getting back to my original test page, which was the Wikipedia page describing aspirin. So again, a nice way to go back to the sources of the structures, but in case, uh, but in this case, using the Google search engine, which, is, which has a lot bigger index than chemical isotope. Uh, 
Um, this is a page that describes what happens uh, in the background of web search. I'm just going to go through this really quickly. So in the example of aspirin headache, we recognize aspirin as a chemical structure and we are generating a bunch of human readable identifiers like aspirin uh, and another uh, common name, an inchy key, a smile string and an IUPAC name, systematic name. These are uh, representations of the structure that might appear in a, uh, in a web page. This is information that Google can look for. Once we have the search results, we also look for molecules in the, on those pages to give you this table of contents, as you saw. And the byproduct of this service uh, is that when we save the molecules for image generations, so purely technical reason, we found that we are generating a very interesting database. So these are molecules that people found interesting for some reason. And that reason is that it relates to a Google search query. So in that database, today we have over one million molecules. Um, if you can read the URL, that is chemicalize.org slash URL slash 1M, then if you head to this page, then you can download this one million structures as an SD file or SMILES file or a, or a Chemex and Marvin document. I hope you will find it useful and if you cannot read the link, then we will type it in the chat box. Uh, after the webinar. Um, there's also something I want to share with you about the user interface. I hope you will agree with this. If not, then we are very, very interested in your feedback. Um, a couple of months ago, someone called Matt Swain uh, published a review of chemicalize.org uh, in the Journal of uh, Chemistry, Informatics and Modeling. He's from the University of Cambridge. And what he found resonated very well with our aims, our project aims with chemicalize.org. Namely that chemists very dearly need simple user interfaces because in the cheminformatics world it's very, very rare that you don't find long forms with dozens of options. At the bottom you can find a few quotes, but the basics uh, are that people tend to uh, prefer chemicalized torques interface over other interfaces because it's very simple and it's very easy to start with. So I hope you will agree with these thoughts, but if not, then I'm very, very open uh, to feedback or even criticism. Um, since it's 2013, we cannot uh, leave out mobile access, so I'm happy to say that chemicalized org has an Android application which gives you the ability to do very much the same thing that I demoed in the application, but because it would be very, very difficult for me to share the screen of an Android device through the webinar, um, unfortunately I cannot, cannot demo this today. Um, and I think this is the end of the presentation. So all that remains is to thank Andres from Chemaxon for giving us the talk on Chemicalize and to thank the attendees. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Bye, everyone.